Okay, hey everyone, let's go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah Paris. I'm currently based in Colorado Springs, Colorado in the US and have been a contributor on Medium since February 2020, so just as the pandemic was hitting, um, and have been writing professionally uh, for many years off and on. Um, on a side note, my first session was at 7.30 this morning, so I'm very hopped up on caffeine and nervous energy. Um, so I'm very palm sweaty mom spaghetti, so please bear with me on that. Uh, that said, I'm hoping that my experiences can help and encourage you all to define write, your writing and your writing journey on your own terms. Uh, whether you're just embarking on your writing journeys with trembling fear and excitement, or have already achieved the success you've longed for, um, hopefully I can help you. Yes, I worked in Hollywood, as the title of my session implies, but no, I never reached a life-changing goal in my writing career there. In fact, when I first landed in LA, nothing went as I had envisioned. Some work experiences were phenomenal. Some celebrities were gracious and kind. Other work experiences exposed the rot of humanity and other celebrities were mm, kind of kind of gross. But if you stick around till the end of this, I'll give you a recap of the time I had the chance to have a phenomenal conversation with George Clooney uh, that was interrupted by my bowels. So, <laughs> Um, I don't want your tears of boredom to leak through and fritz my keyboard, but I want to start sh to just sharing a little bit about my journey as a gig worker and writer in Hollywood and the writer uh, writing lessons that I've learned as a result. If you're a writer who struggles to know what your next step looks like and you assume that someone with Hollywood connections leads a glamorous life and probably earns millions, that's far from the truth for at least 87% of film and TV professionals. You're probably familiar with the WGA and SAG strikes that are ongoing. So you may have heard some staggering statistics on the amount of creatives who struggle to make ends meet. But did you know that according to the WGA, out of the 50,000 speculative scripts registered annually, only 25 or so are actually ever optioned and made. I am here to encourage you and not depress you, I promise. But life as a creative can be monumentally hard Yet when even small victories occur, it feels soul-giving. So how do we get to those soul-giving moments? The truth is that the road for creative professionals, especially writers, can feel thankless and can be winding and bifurcate into many branches. Personal and professional life for us all can get messy, but we write because we have to. As Ray Bradbury says in his book, Zen in the Art of Writing, you must stay drunk on writing so reality won't destroy you. But it's not all doom and gloom. It's world, it's world building and soul affirming. And I am still here to encourage you, I swear. My personal Hollywood journey began approximately in 1775 when I moved to Burbank and snagged a high profile internship with a, pro a producer whose offices were on the Warner Brothers lot. I won't disclose his name here because I believe that the NDA I signed at the time is eternally binding but he was notorious for his ability to scream for 10 hours straight and once made my direct boss, a male, confident, talented senior VP of development, sob hysterically. Although he was nice to me, I lived in constant fear of messing up. Ultimately, after loads of script coverage, school, uh, cool experiences and sporadic PA work, I left Hollywood, eventually for Colorado, and then I returned after many years. I couldn't let go of that dream, the dream I was sure I was supposed to follow. Within a short amount of time of my returning, I had a lot of work under my belt. I had written a screenplay for hire, but I didn't really know what my writing voice was. I kept churning out material that I thought would land me a game-changing contract, but my heart wasn't in it, and I was failing hard. I sank into depression. Perhaps this wasn't the path for me after all. But did this mean I should quit writing? That I should let the burning flames of my passion and possible talent turn to embers before fading completely to ash? No. Failure is a comma. It's not a full stop. And yes, I did just loosely quote Coldplay, but I'm sticking by that. I started to feel like I wanted to leave Los Angeles. So I followed my intuition. Although I grew up on the East Coast, 
Colorado has been my adult home. And as I prayed about whether or not I should return, I slouched under my imagined weight as a colossal failure. One early morning, I had a one day gig on a friend's short film. Bleary eyed, I reluctantly left my home before dawn. As I turned off of my street in Eagle Rock, I turned right onto Colorado Boulevard. I look across the street and there's a girl walking her dogs in a University of Colorado hoodie. I then pop on my shuffle iPad or iPod and a song by the Flying Burrito Brothers comes on with the lyrics, Colorado, is it too late? Can I change my mind and come home? So I took that as a sign. Intuition isn't just your internal warning sign. It can be God's whisper, the whisper of faith to take a step, even when that step feels counterintuitive. When it comes to a full life, it's vital to listen to and to follow that whisper. I headed back to Colorado and it took years before that choice was validated, but I definitely did the right thing. If you intuitively feel that you should take your writing in a specific direction, regardless of how unproven or scary that seems, you should listen to that inner voice. It may not mean immediate success, but it can lead you from one small actionable step to another. And that giant leap will eventually come. Failure is not what you think it is. Failure isn't the ability to reach your goals. It's the inability to course correct, remold your dreams, and to learn from your mistakes. When I realized that Hollywood wasn't going to work out for me, I didn't kill my passion or give up on my writing dreams. I just learned to change my path. Medium, especially, is a fantastic way to explore your writing voice. If you're a writer who has joined Medium for a quick route to fame and fortune, sadly, you'll be sor sorely disappointed and get frustrated quickly. In order to build your audience, you need to interact with other writers and readers, and not with a, I clapped for your piece, here's mine, angle. Learn what work you love on the platform and recognize why it works. Connect with the writers behind it. Through Medium, I discovered that I love and may possess an iota of talent for writing personal essays in hopes that I can help myself and others make sense of our chaotic world. Although I've always injected humor into my writing through submitting to and then editing for Mudium, I realized that I might have a talent for writing straight humor pieces as well. I also discovered that writing about film, TV and music and the ability of these art forms to speak into and change our lives came easily to me. This helps me to recognize and refine my voice as a writer. It may be, it may take hundreds of pieces before you ever experience a viral medium hit. So what works? It works to infuse your writing with authenticity. I can't stress that enough. If you write with authenticity, the readers will come. Perhaps not as quickly as the ghosts of baseball players and Field of Dreams, but eventually. You may have the writing skill part down pat, but talent comes from your ability to truly express yourself and not who you think readers want you to be. If you're writing about topics that you don't care about, read readers will spot your phoniness a mile away. If you try to emulate the voice of another writer or a formulaic pattern that has been blah, 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 has been successful for another writer, sorry about that, your desired audience will see through you. Conversely, if you write with passion and authenticity, readers will eventually flock regardless of the subject matter. At the risk of sounding like a cheesy poster, be yourself, believe in your talent, write, 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 and then write some more. Ask yourself, what value could a reader gain from my piece? Am I engaging with my reader on an authentic level? Am I offering a unique perspective? You can write about personal experiences and still resonate with your audience. In fact, I would say infusing your stuff with personal experiences is what resonates with your audience. In your spare time, read, 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 and then read some more. Reflect on why you love or hate a story or article you read. What works, what doesn't, and why? In a sea of writing advice, it's easy to get caught up in the riptide of garbage wisdom or envy the wave of success someone else is riding. 
The truth is there isn't a one size fits all approach to writing success. Writing point A for you may lead to point B. For another writer, it may lead to point Z. Ask yourself what you hope to achieve by writing. Can you break your why down into smaller goals? Without a why, writing is a directionless road that leads to burnout and complete frustration. And now, the moment that you guys have been waiting for, back to George Clooney. Although Clooney wasn't the first A-lister I interacted with, he was the first to approach me in the Warner Brothers commissary. I've written about our encounter before on Medium, and in the interest of time, I don't want to go into too much detail. But as we began to talk, much like right now, my mouth turned to a desert wasteland. I was so nervous and so awkward, and not at all the cool, cool and witty banter I imagined coming from my first extended celebrity chat. After a few minutes of light conversation, I started to feel this uninvited punk band slam dancing in my intestines. I felt like I was in train spotting as I quickly cut the chat short and sprinted to the closest restroom. When I emerged 15 minutes later, my dreams of a close friendship with George Clooney were shattered forever. He had left. <laughs> Um, I just want to say thanks for hanging in with me. I'm going to open this up in a moment for Q&A. Uh, I will ask if you have questions for me, you go to the Q&A tab. And uh, if you can tell me where you're from as well, I would just love to see who's, who's repped here, what states and countries are here today at, at Medium Day. And I just want to challenge you guys to allow yourself to see writing success as a path with many branches, all of which can still lead to your ultimate goal. Know your why, follow your intuition, write with authenticity and follow your passion. Let your small victories be enough to propel you forward. All right, I'm gonna get to your questions here. Oh, I have to announce the Q and A. All right. Q&A is open, and I'll kind of go through some of the questions that are already in here. <laughs> Patrick asks, would you recommend to anyone else who isn't a Nepo baby to take, take a chance on a creative career in Hollywood? I would. I mean, I think if that's your dream, you just have to be prepared for the fact that, one, it's a really long road. Two, it's so much about networking there. Like the only ins I had there were because I organically met people. Um, I had a screenwriting mentor who was pretty prolific screenwriter and he introduced me to a lot of people. My best friend from my internship had stayed the whole time and kind of risen through the ranks. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say like, you just have to know that it's your passion and there are going to be a lot of years that are hard and you might like me end up, more of a full-time server and bartender who has dreams of that. Uh, I was I was in that space for a long time um, and I'm now writing professionally uh, full-time. But uh, yeah, you just have to be ready to, you know, <laughs> just be just be ready to, to know that your dreams are going to take a long time and be ready to stick it out there. So let's see if there are, any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? I've got I've got some of my own. If not, <laughs> all right. I'll, I'm I'll still uh, kind of hang out and wait for questions. But um, I, I have a couple here from Eric Pierce who could not be here. He is at a wedding right now. But he, he asked, is there anything you do differently if you were just starting out as a screenwriter, knowing what you do now? And I would say my answer to that is like a thousand times yes. Um, I think I, I limited myself by thinking I knew what my path should look like and listening to other people who told me what my path should look like. So I kind of uh, missed out on some opportunities that I think I would have had otherwise. Um, so really no more questions. Patrick's the only one. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. He also asked, do you have any tips on locating clients for freelance work? And I think much like 
I, I think this is true for all creative professions, but it's about networking. Um, you build relationships with other writers with, with more experience than you. And um, I know for me, my two main steady freelance gigs both came through Medium Connections. Um, so media, Medium really can help you with work outside of the platform. All right, let's see what else. Oh, and I would also say if you're looking at something like uh, Upwork for work, just be really careful. Uh, some, some of those employers are very shady. Um, so make sure you're doing your research before you grab an Upwork job. All right, let's see. The best and worst parts of being a freelancer. As a full-time freelancer, I feel pretty equipped to answer that. Uh, the best parts are you get to pick and choose your own clients. Um, you can kind of let go of any clients that aren't a perfect fit for you. You create your own schedule. You can kind of curate where your writing lands um, as long as you're prepared for the fact that some publications take a long time to answer to, to pitches and submissions. Um, and you can live as a digital nomad. So you can do your work from anywhere. So I think that's really appealing. The worst parts are probably that uh, as a freelancer, you are expected to pay your own taxes. Um, there are no benefits, no benefit packages. Uh, the money can be inconsistent. It can, you can make a lot one month and then really feel like you're back in college and eating ramen the next. Um, and I think for me, pit, I hate the pitching process. I really, really hate it. <laughs> I hate pitching myself and I really hate having to pitch articles, but it's, but it's great too. I mean, and I think one thing I will ask myself, since really no one has any questions, this is so sad. Um, but I think uh, for me as well, like sometimes I take jobs that aren't necessarily what I envisioned on the, on the path to my ultimate goals, but I still learn so much. Like, I, I don't care about marketing content. That's not really my jam usually. Um, but by by writing it and caring about the client that I'm writing for, it's helped me to really hone my writing uh, for my short stories and novels that I've worked on. Um, made my kind of my phrasing and my visualization tighter. And it's helped me to be able to self edit my my own work. And yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take any questions, like anything silly. Let's see, am I just missing stuff here? Okay, how did, uh, from an anonymous member, how did movies influence your writing? Um, I think movies were really the first thing that spoke to me creatively that made me feel like I really wanted to be able to share my stories the way that I saw this happening on screen. So it's always influenced my writing, even pre-screenwriting, um, because I tend to be a visual writer. I tend to see the scene play out in my head and that's kind of what I convey to the page. Good question, thanks. And do my comedy instincts ever get in the way of other types of writing? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's a part of my voice. Um, I don't, tend to honestly write a lot of comedy, a straight comedy in terms of my fiction, especially. Um, so I, th I mean, I think like it, it influences my other stuff. It influences my articles, it influences my short stories, but it doesn't uh, overwhelm them. And I don't feel like there's a moment where I'm like forcing a comedic moment to occur. All right, from MB Stevens says, do you think writers need to create a proof of concept to break through the white noise? Wow, that's a great question, but I think a really in-depth answer would be needed on that one too. I, you know, I think, uh, I think that it's not needed, but I think it's, it's, it would be wise, especially now with every how everything's evolving with AI and stuff. Uh, Buddy asks, what kind of stories or subjects would you like to try writing that you haven't tried yet? Oh, that's a good question. 
I think um, I'd like to try to write a longer comedy piece because again, with my fiction, I don't tend to write comedy. I mean, there are, you know, there might be moments where humor is interjected, but um, yeah, I, I think I'd like to try a longer comedy piece. And Simon asks, how important is it to interact with commenters on Medium? Oh my gosh, it's so important. That's how you build that network, you guys. Like, you, if, you, if you're just pushing your pieces on Medium, it could be the greatest thing you've ever written in your life, but it's going to go falling into that black void, that huge abyss, and you're gonna get frustrated because you're like, why do I only have two reads on this? This piece is a masterpiece. If you're not reading other readers and writers, and if you're not interacting them in, with them in the comments, there's just no way for you to stand out as an individual. There's also no way for you to build relationships, which I think is a really pivotal part of Medium. Um, it seems uh, anonymous asks. It seems like there is a growing indie film production movement. Any insights on engaging with them? Yeah, I mean, I think there is, and there has been for, gosh, a couple of decades now. And I think that you engage with them kind of the same. I mean, they're still part of the Hollywood machine. You know, um, if you're if you're talking about in terms of submitting scripts and that sort of thing. Most companies, even indie companies, do not accept unsolicited scripts, but a really good way to kind of be on the ground floor breaking in on that is to um, enter some of these contests like Big the B big Break. Um, again, you have to sift through those too. There are a lot of bogus screenwriting contests, but there are some that really do launch careers. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just, it's the same thing. You'd still have to kind of be where the action is to get the connections to meet uh, indie filmmakers. All right, let's see. Reggie Britton. Hey, from Vermont. Are you aware of humor stories that have been boosted? Yeah. Um, I mean, I can, I can speak for myself and say that I had, it was more of a personal essay than it wasn't a, a Muddyum piece, but it was for another publication, a personal essay that was very silly. <laughs> uh, but it was boosted. I was very surprised. So at least I can speak for myself anecdotally that yes, I do, I am aware. Let's see. Kiki. All right. Let's see. Nikhil says, I have a TV series script. Been writing for pleasure for years, but never professionally. I, panned, I plan to pitch it to streaming platforms through soft introductions. Do you have any advice? Uh, yeah, I, if you don't have a connection to those platforms, um, it's gonna be tough for them to, to agree to, to look at your stuff or to even read your pitches. But I would say, um, starting by like, there are places that do accept unsolicited pitches. I'd start by kind of looking at some of that stuff. Um, a really great thing to follow would be the blacklist. And these are uh, unsolicited or spec scripts um, that are kind of curated and, and give the writers an opportunity to break in without those connections. So let's see. All right. Maria says, we all know now that being a Hollywood writer is rarely gl glamorous, but that's the perception among the general population. Were, were people all struck and impressed when they knew what you did, do you ever miss that aspect? Um, that's a great question too. I found not awestruck, but I found it really difficult to talk about my experiences with friends who had not at least shared some of those experiences. Um, 
I think people tended to think that I was lying. <laughs> so I just kind of kept them to myself. And I and I always felt weird about telling people that I had worked in uh, in Hollywood because of that very reason, because people were like, oh, oh, Miss Hollywood. And I'm like, oh, no, I eat a lot of ramen um, and worked many hours at a restaurant through that. So, all right, let's see. <laughs> Gentry asks, what's the best way to write with authenticity? Do you have any recommendations for being an authentic writer and creative? I'm laughing because our, our sessions kind of touched on similar things. If you have a chance to watch his recorded session later, do so. Um, I think the, the best way to write with authenticity is to write about stuff that matters to you. You don't have to be an expert on it by any means, just something that drives your heart. And when you write about that honestly without an agenda and you kind of just let the story happen rather than forcing what you want the message to be in it, um, I think that that's the way to do it. Let's see. Simon asks, what advice would you give to those struggling to cope with writing rejections? Oh, wow. <laughs> I think because we all have them and because often, I mean, I might get some kind of submission acceptance every 12 times I've submit and I'm not, and I'm not even talking about entire manuscripts. I'm talking articles and short stories with that. You have to be prepared for it. Rejection is totally part of the game, but the good thing is um, what you'll find as you, continue to submit and get rejected is that a lot of the time it's not about your writing. It's just not what they're looking for at the moment, but they might remember you because you submitted a quality piece and that might give you an in later. Um, but also I've found there are form rejections and then there are specific rejections. You cling on to those specific rejections because they're almost as great as acceptances. Uh, they usually highlight what they liked about your work. Um, but also look for the, the key thing too is we would, we would really love to see more of your work in the future. That's a great sign to keep submitting. Um, but I would, I would say pick and focus on the places where you really would like to see your writing and just keep trying. Um, but rejection is a part of the game and, and never, 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 write to an editor or a publisher or an agent and ask, why did you reject my piece? Um, that's kind of a, an industry no-no, sadly. <laughs> so sometimes you're just left scratching your head. All right. Just wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. Thanks so much, you guys, for hanging with me and for dealing with my caffeine-induced hyperness. All right, let's see. I'm gonna to go to the chat and just make sure I didn't miss anything there. Oh, um, Susan, who is uh, the creator and editor in chief extraordinaire of Muddy M says she, they are actually regularly seeing boosted stories. So that's great. Carrie asks, do you write for fun? And if so, what do you write? I do write for fun. <laughs> um, I'm still kind of writing for fun with the purpose in mind, I guess, but I, I would say medium is my fun writing. I, I just, I love that I can explore any facet of any niche, any facet I want to write. And so I would say personal essays and short stories are, are kind of my writing for fun. Let's see. Rathish, uh, I hope I didn't butcher your name, says, these days graphic and sexual content are encouraging the viewership high. Do you succumb to these while writing? No, and no, I, I kind of disagree with that thought as well. I don't think that they're in driving a high on viewership at all. I think if you if you look at the the streaming shows and then the films, that have been doing extraordinarily well. It's because of amazing writing and amazing character development. All right, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, Jaden asks, and I think this is my last question. Um, how easy is it to experiment and hop onto different experiences in screenwriting to figure out what you'd like to do? I would say, I mean, I would say it, it, it's easy and difficult um, because initially you're writing, you're probably not writing your screenplays to make money. Um, I, I was doing like a lot of script coverage for a long time and then slowly was asked to write treatments and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I would say like, especially when you're just starting out or just trying to get a portfolio of, of screenplays and scripts, experiment all you want, you know, cause you're under no pressure at all. Um, okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm so sorry if I missed any of your questions. It was kind of, Q and A was kind of funky for a little bit. And I really appreciate uh, you guys being here with me today. If you have any other questions, just reach out to me um, in a private note on, on a Medium piece. And I would love to connect with you. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of Medium Day. Thank you so, so, so much for being here.